Hey guys, welcome back to Alpha Commission, a place where uh, learners uh, help each other learn um, as we go through the process of understanding crypto and uh, NFTs, other things uh, related to the blockchain. Uh, something very cool just happened uh, while I was uh, contemplating making this video. Um, I had just posted a uh, you know a tweet about an hour ago that. Um, you know, the market is uh, feeling a little bit different to me today. You know, uh, ever since we hit 33K, we started a bouncing in a different way, very bullish direction to it. And uh, just something seemed a little bit different. And I tried to put my ideas to it. So uh, one of the things that I pointed out here was that, um, you know, we... Uh, we had some uh, trend breaks, you know. We uh, we have the uh, 20 daily above our trend line, and we have the 10 daily. Uh, we had the 10 daily almost above the trend line. So I was pointing out, you know, it feels a little bit like July. You know, just something was telling me something something might be about to happen just about an hour ago. Of course, none of this is financial advice. But, um, you know, is there a reason to feel bullish about Bitcoin right now? Well, here's what I'm talking about. Um, if we go to the uh, daily chart, right, this is on the four hour. We can compare how the trend looks in summer compared to how it looks now. Now, we've had the uh, 50 EMA, this blue line, getting over our trend line for quite a while. That happened here also in summer. But one thing that hasn't really happened is that our 20 EMA, this uh, yellow line, that hadn't really broken trend. But this morning it did. Now, you probably know by now uh, because this video is going to take a while to upload, that we had kind of a god candle. We had a massive pump that just brought everything out of trend. But um, just this morning, I saw that the uh, 20 was breaking trend, and we were down here. We weren't even close to this. This was this all happened in like 15 minutes. But we were down here, and I was, you know, there was a very good chance that we could that we could fall lower, but I just thought it's quite interesting that, you know, there's this directionality to the market and also that the 50 and the 20 have broken trend. And we had this weird little kink and you know, we had this weird little kink in uh, the 10, the 10 EMA, which could indicate that there is a possibility for a, a squeeze to come up here, that this trend might continue, and that this might have been just a fake out down. Um, this episode is just uh, EMA centric. I'm not going to use any other fancy indicators because uh, I personally like the EMAs. Uh, I was taught how to use them by uh, Crypto Reda, and uh, I use them in a similar way to how uh, Cosa Veritas may use them. And, uh, you know, those of you who know me, I'm trying to study a little bit more of the techniques of like uh, Cosa Verdes and Crown and some of these guys and just try to make my own style. And we can discuss your style and what you may be like to develop uh, in our group. But just for today, I wanted to talk about um, how EMAs can help you understand the bigger picture on the uh, market. And before we had any of this pump, when it looked like we might even be just about to sink down again, get rejected and sink down, I I was saying, you know, well, this this kind of this break of the 20, you know, following the 50, even though this is quite a period of time later, that reminds me of July, especially the fact that um, the 10 was creeping up all, along that trend also. You can see how far away the 10 is, right? That's the red line. The 10 is so far away from this uh, this white trend line. Let me turn off our price action. You can see lots of room here, lots of room. It, get, it got pretty close, but it never came up to trend. And when it started to get very, very close, I just thought, wow, this, this looks like something might happen. 
And if you watch your EMAs, that's exactly what happened right here, right? Very far away, very far away, very far away, came very close, and then, you know, when the uh, 10 broke the trend, I mean, pardon me, when the 20 broke the trend, and the 10 was very close, and the 50 was already there, of course, we had this massive pump. So what do we see now? A massive pump up. And both of these EMAs are curled upwards. It's a very positive looking indication as opposed to them all being pointed down. We did have them pointed up here, but we were under trend, right? We were under trend and we got a huge rejection, got a huge rejection right there. So what do I really want to see? Because obviously we've had pumps before, We've had pumps before, pumps before, pumps before. And this white line, this isn't fixed, right? This is just imaginary. We could now redraw it like this, right? Because previously it was here, here, right, here. You can always redraw a trend line. Just, you know, just because you broke through, that that's not good enough. That's not good enough. You have to get above a certain threshold you know, take out your previous high, or you have to do something more interesting than just break trend, because you can break trend, and then, you know, when this was our trend line, oh, we, we broke trend, everyone get bullish. Yeah, but we were rejected off the 50, right? Just like what's happening right now, except we were rejected off of the 50. Same thing over here, right? We had a trend line. You could you could have drawn it something like this, right? Just imagine it pumped through, rejected off the 50. So what I really want to see, and this uh, the part of the equation that I've you know included here. Of course, when I made this, because this was before that massive pump, I said that I wanted to see the. Um, the uh, red 10 line get above the trend line. And uh, um, of course the uh, yellow and the blue. But uh, what I really want to see is the price action to get above this blue area. As our price goes up, these will curve just like it curved right here. And if we can sit on top of that, kind of take out this prior high, then that's going to be a very bullish indication to me. If we don't, then we might get rejected somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around $42,000. We didn't take out the previous high. We're not sitting on top of the 50 uh, EMA daily. And, you know, maybe it could be something like this. We just fail to get above it. Fail to get above it, right? Not even close. So if that happens, then we could just move our trend line out. We'll just move wherever it gets to. We're just going to move our trend line out to wherever it got, got to, and then we're going to have to start the process over again because we weren't able to get above there. Why is that 50 so important to me? Well, if you zoom out a little bit, you can see that we typically do ride above the 50 right on this daily chart we ride above the 50 whenever we're above the 50 we're pretty bullish whenever we're underneath it we're pretty bearish right this choppiness indicated a lot of bearishness coming up everyone got freaked out here right fell here broke under the 50 everyone got freaked this was a good sign to get out right that's why i was saying uh if we uh broke under 59 you know, 59k. I was telling everyone if we broke under 59k, that's you know, get out, get out. You know, my friend uh, who's a little bit smarter than me, uh, Crypto Retta, he was uh, saying, you know, if you uh, his line in the sand was 62k. Not 100% sure how we derived it. Probably because of the crossing of these, uh, you know, the 10 and the 20 on the daily. Probably just picked that point. And uh, that would have been a great indicator also, because look, when they're crossing bullishly, we are pretty bullish. When they're crossing negatively, we're pretty negative. Now, for the uh, 20 and the 10, we haven't had a bullish crossing yet. If we extend this, you know, if this uh, 20 extends, then at some point they will cross, and then that would be a bullish indication, right? Somewhere around 40K. Um, right around where they might cross 
the um, the 50. And so probably from both of our perspectives, this would be an interesting area to take a look at. Of course, uh, if you want to be um, if you want to have ultra, you know, safety, you know, you want to be very conservative about things, you can take a look at the weekly chart. And on the weekly chart, well, our 50 is also up here, you know, so around 43, 44. If you took out that area, you'd get above the 50. And on the weekly, also, if you're above the 50, it's a pretty safe area. All right, look, we bounced off the 50 here. So if we can get above the 50, that would be an interesting bullish indication. But we could also bounce off the 50 on the weekly. And so that whole 42 to 44 area is going to be very trappy. You're going to want to watch out for that. And so then you might think, well, you know, from this bigger picture on the weekly chart, you know, what would be, you know, bullish confirmation? Well, probably getting above this uh, 20, right? Because that's when these things start to cross bullishly again, right? Because the 10 is going to curl up and it's going to cross the 20, just like here, right? They cross bullishly, bullish, bearish. And so that's going to be somewhere around 47 to $50,000, you know, depending how the price action goes. And so these are two levels, you know, well, we can actually think about three levels. First, breaking this trend that we've been in for months now, right? And second, this a forty-two to $44,000 area. It's going to be very trappy. If we can sit on top of that and then also bust through 50000 that's going to be a very interesting indication. You know, maybe we could get into this uh, bullishness that even brings us back to the top of our channel. you know, somewhere around 70,000, you know, maybe, maybe we could do that. You know, there's no reason we couldn't if the news stays decent. Uh, but, you know, if we have like maybe interest rates issues or there's a war, supply chain issues, then these would be key areas that people would be trying to take profit off of because they know that there's some um, big psychological barriers there. And um, some of these levels you know, they're just going to want to take their profit and their money out of the market and capitalize on the pump. And if we zoom out here, we can see how as long as we're over this uh, 50, you know, the, the health of Bitcoin is very good. When we get under it, the health gets very bad, very bad. Right. So that 50 on the weekly is also very important. And, you know, because you don't have to be 100 percent secure. In uh, your trades, you know, the the 20 is very decent. Right. We get some wicks below it, but we generally stay above the uh, 20. And for me, that's going to be the uh, hopium that we have, that uh, this pump isn't just an extension of our trend line, but rather that we've now busted through it and that this was something very similar to July um, that could at least take us up to hopefully 42K. And if we can get above that 40, you know, 43, 44 area, that would be even more interesting. And then maybe I'd start looking at that 50K area. But uh, again, you know, we're all learners here at uh, Alpha Commission. And if you have any thoughts of your own, you want to have any objections or tell me what I did wrong here, then go ahead and uh, join us. Uh, the group is open. And, um, oops. And, uh, you know, the link is in the uh, description below. But it was very fun to watch Bitcoin finally break this uh, months-long uh, trend here and get above it just in real time. That was an incredible movement on the candle there, just extremely bullishly engulfing. And, you know, the ideal case would be that we maybe retrace a little bit 
and then start building up some candle action here and then just squeeze up because what could happen is that this just deflates and we get rejected again like this could be a fake out right you see this massive wick here there was a fake out before it dropped to hell right what we don't want to see is this turning into one of these little skinny things because it retraces all the way back down gets under trend and then everyone loses confidence and then we fall to hell where would we fall to uh you know we could get back to this like 35 500 dollar area or perhaps if we did smash through that like one of these type of drops then maybe back to 33k or 30k but uh, yeah that was a very bullish indication today and personally i'm <laughs> very excited sorry for the lack of preparation on this video but um you know sometimes things happen like a live right when you're uh, right when you're thinking about uh, uh, making something and then it, you know you have to catch up to it but um, again I drew these in these were not printed by the EMA indicator I drew these in regarding what I wanted to see I can move this because we've already had the breakout so the next thing that I want to see is these start to cross start to pinch off and then break above that 50 on the daily that's going to look something like this where we break above the trend right and then these things start crossing bullishly and then they get above this blue 50. when that happens it's going to probably pop off because everyone's going to get really excited and then it'll come back you know generally to touch one of these lines after the enthusiasm fades people take some profit and if we can hold on top of that, right, if we don't break down, if we can hold on top of it and sit on top of it, then that's going to be a good indication that we might have a little run. We might have a little run. And we're not there yet. This could always come back. It could always shrink back just like this wick, and then we just move the trend line over and start over again. But if we do manage to retrace only to this red line, only to the 10 EMA, and hold above the 10 EMA, right? And start puncturing the 20 EMA more and more and more until we get above it, and then we can get above the 50. That's gonna look really good. That's gonna be something different. That'll be sort of like what happened here, but then we also can get above the 50. That would look very bullish to me. So sometimes I emphasize, you know, what could go wrong, but again, I'm not bullish or bearish. I'm <laughs> I'm kind of both because I know Bitcoin goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. So there's no reason to, you know, be a perma bear or a perma bull. You just can look at the price action, look at your EMAs, maybe a couple other indicators that are your favorite, you know, and make some decisions for yourself. But uh, again, you can join that discussion over at Alpha Commission. Uh, Glad to have you, and um, hope you have a good day. Happy trading.